Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy, a real estate investor and Notion creator. The start of a new year, so I thought I would go and give you an overview of my brand new Notion setup. Now this is quite advanced, so if you're new to Notion, then it may be worth checking out some of my other videos first. But what I wanted to do is just go and show you uh, some of the information that I found doing some research online, uh, how I've put that into a dashboard, how I think about going about creating um, my Notion setup, so that you can then go and use some of these tips and tricks uh, in your own workspace. This is only going to be an overview, but what I would say is that if you are interested in some specific areas um, of how I do things, say how I manage my uh, knowledge, uh, how I go and uh, organize my uh, OKRs, then just drop a comment down uh, below the video. And then if I get enough sort of people that are interested in a certain topic, then I'll go and make a video on that in the future. So let's kick things off. And the first thing that I wanted to show you is actually not in Notion at all, but um, a tool called Whimsical. And this is where I go and plan out my various dashboards. And I think it'd be useful just to show you how I sort of arrange my information first before we get into the specific Notion um, setup itself. So here you can see various boxes and each of these represent um, a different dashboard that I use within my Notion setup. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go over these just to explain a little bit more about them. The first thing at the top is pretty straightforward. So this is um, my company goals. And this is where I just go and set my targets for um, a certain date. So it may be quarterly, it may be annually. Um, but that's why I just go and um, set a clear, smart goal um, about where I want to get to um, so that I go and focus on achieving what I want. Then underneath, I've got what I call um, areas. And this comes um, a little bit from Tiago Forte's um, Para Method. Um, and for me in my business, an area that's uh, ongoing that I want to go and manage over time. Um, and within my business, it covers things like marketing, sales, finance, uh, product development, etc. So I've got an areas database here um, and for each of those areas, um, I may want to go and set some objectives, which is the next database. So for those of you who aren't aware, objectives and key results or OKRs uh, are a way of going and uh, achieving goals um, by going and saying, where do you want to get to? which is the objective, and it's not um, its not got numbers associated with it, it's supposed to be stretch, it's supposed to be inspirational. And you go and say, okay, what are the key results, what are the numbers that I need to achieve in order to be able to achieve my objective? So let me give you an example. Let's say that you wanted to go and uh, increase your um, aware brand awareness for a certain um, product. Well, to do that, that could be your objective. And then the key results could be that you've got a certain number of sales. It could be that you've gone and achieved a certain number of um, uh, Facebook or Twitter um, uh, followers, um, etc. So you set what's your objective, which is qualitative. And then you've gone and got your key results, which are then numbers. So I've got the objectives. Um, I've got the key results underneath. And those are the things that are within my control. On the left hand side, I then associate objectives to a certain quarter. So I only plan in quarters. So quarterly planning uh, is a little bit like around the 12 week year, which you may have heard of. Um, and then within each quarter, I've got um, weeks. Um, so what weeks um, are associated with the quarter? And then within the quarter, what objectives am I focusing on? Now, if you imagine that we've got a key result, say, for example, um, get a certain number of uh, Twitter followers. Well, to be able to achieve that key result, you then need to do some work. And that's built into projects. Now, for any of you who have read uh, Getting Things Done by David Allen, uh, he actually talks about a project being anything that's more than one task. So they can be quite smaller projects or it can be a lot larger. But what are the packages of work that you are doing in order to go and achieve your key results? So those are projects. Uh, and projects here then are for key results. Within projects, we've also got uh, tasks. So what are the tasks that I'm working on to achieve the projects? And then we've got sort of the knowledge management side of things as well. So what are some of the um, resources? And for me, a resource um, is a collection of information around a topic. So for example, if I've got marketing as a, a key area that I'm uh, responsible for, resources may be social media marketing, it may be copywriting, uh, etc. So it's all around a certain topic that's for a certain area. Uh, imagine for sales, it may be around uh, how to go and price your products. So it may be pricing strategies, that might be a type of resource. So those are topics of interest. And then leading into the resources are notebooks, and then notes. Um, so I'll show you those um, in my uh, Notion setup in a minute. So that's an overview. And I just wanted to show you that first before we get into the nitty gritty of Notion, just to give you a quick overview. Continuing with an overall picture of how I structure my Notion. 
Um, I also wanted to quickly go and show you about team spaces. Now, although these are designed for working with lots of different people, I do find that it's quite useful to structure your Notion setup, even if you are a solopreneur or maybe you're just uh, intending to grow, but you don't have a team at the moment because it helps you to go and separate things out into very logical areas. So if I quickly show you, I'm here in my uh, Notion dashboard, uh, but on the left-hand side, I've got team spaces. So if I just go and open this up, you can see at the top that I've got my internal OS. So this is where this dashboard belongs. It's where I manage the goals, the OKRs, the knowledge. So it's all of the sort of workings of the company. Uh, but then underneath, I've got various teams. So I've got coaching and mentoring. So I go and work with others to help them in their businesses. I've got my digital products, so that's within its own team space, and that's where I can manage launches, development, um, tracking, um, etc. Uh, marketing, so here is where, for example, this YouTube channel or the information on those videos lie. Uh, sales, finance, team, so when I start building my standard operating procedures, etc., that'll go into team. And then administration here is where all of my databases lie. My first tip is I would strongly suggest that you put all of your databases into one place. So rather than having a database where it's actually needed spread throughout your workspace, that can be really um, difficult to manage, um, but also uh, it can be a bit risky in case people accidentally delete things. So instead, here, for example, in administration and then my admin home, I've just got a databases page. And then on here, I've got all of the different databases all stored in one place. And then I just use linked views um, across um, the various workspace um, to go and access these databases without actually having the original database uh, in lots of different places. So that's a quick tip. Cool. So if I go back to my uh, internal OS and then my dashboard here, um, and we can see that um, the dashboard has a lot of information on it. And as I said earlier, this is quite an advanced setup. Um, but the next tip that I would give you is whenever you set up a page in Notion, think about what you want that page to do for you. Um, and that may sound a little bit um, unusual, but basically don't come from the position of the tool. So what database do I want to put in here? Um, what pages am I going to create? Because it can get a little bit messy instead think when i land on this page what do i want this page to do so let me show you for example my dashboard for me the dashboard needs to do three things firstly is it needs to go and give me a status update across what i'm trying to achieve and that's where we've got here goals and the okrs and i'll get onto those in a bit more so how am i tracking compared to what i want to achieve so that's the first thing the second thing is I want it to be a launch pad into all of the other areas of my business. So if I land on here, I want to be able to jump into different sections really easily rather than having to go into lots of menus and try and go into a lot of difficult, uh, different buried places. The third thing that I want to be able to do on this page is to quickly go and um, initiate certain tasks. So, so often we may just have an idea going, oh, there's a note, there's something online. I need to do this task. How about that for a project? And I don't want to have to, have to go into lots of different databases or different areas uh, to try and do that. It needs to be as a few clicks as possible. Um, and so here, I'll show you these in a minute. These are just quick actions. So those are the three things that I want to do on my dashboard. Now, different areas of my workspace are for different things. Some areas it may be to go and be inspired. Some areas it may be to go and plan and to schedule things. Some areas it may be to just go and do some work. So a tip that I would really suggest you follow is just think, what do you want a certain page to do? Cool. So if we now have a, a quick explore then of this dashboard. Um, so here we can see at the top, um, we've got a, a synced block. So this is consistent across all of these different areas. And this is how I can jump in between um, different parts of my uh, workspace. So for example, I can then just go to products, click on here, and then that takes me straight away to my products home. And then I can just go back again uh, to my dashboard. Um, and there we've got the menu, etc. So that's the first thing. Then underneath we've got different horizons and in the same vein around what you want pages to do, different parts, um, different schedules or different time periods are for different things. So a day is very much for action taking, it's for doing what needs to be done today. Whereas a week is more of a overview of what wants to be achieved. A quarter view is very much planning, it's very much tracking, it's, it's a much different um, a much different level of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, so that's why each of these are different and I'll show you those uh, in just a minute. Then we've got goals. So here um, I've got my goal. If you remember back to Whimsical, uh, this is my overall, what do I want to achieve? 
So I can see the name of the goal, I can see the uh, the time period, so the 1st of January to the end of this year, and then I can see a progress bar as well. Um, and of course, beginning of the year, so still making, still starting out in this. It's all about focus, this dashboard. And you may have heard the phrase that focus stands for follow one course until successful. So that's all about what this dashboard's for. It's focusing, right, I'm trying to achieve this goal. How am I doing? Am I ahead? Am I behind? What do I need to do? Then we've got our objectives and key results. And again, this is about focusing. So here for this quarter, I've set three clear objectives. So grow my existing product revenue, deepen my understanding of real estate investors' challenges, um, and start to uh, increase knowledge of my notion for real estate brand. So those are the three objectives. And objectives aren't measurable, but they have the key results. So what I've done here is if I just go and open this key result, um, you can see that I've got the timeline, the quarter, the goal it's associated, the department or area, so that's sales, um, and then progress along with the associated key results and the key projects. And what I'm doing is I've got these three key results and the progress over those key results then rolls up to an average, which gives the progress. So as I complete more and more of my key results, I build and build the progress of my objective. So that's the first one. Um, so I can see clearly here how I'm tracking with these objectives. And that's this sort of little target symbol. Then I've got my overview of my key results, which is the key symbol. Um, and again, here we can see what are the key results um, and how am I progressing towards them? So here, for example, the grow the YouTube subscribers, if I open this one, um, we can see what was the initial number of subscribers at the beginning of the year, so 224, and I've gained uh, eight subscribers in the last few days. Um, so the progress is then starting to move. And then underneath, we can see the various projects. So to achieve this YouTube um, key result, um, I've currently got four um, various projects here. So um, updating the copy, um, creating shorts, um, creating a more of a marketing plan, etc., etc. So those are the projects. Um, and I've got here a template where I've got the projects, a scratch pad, etc. So you can see that in terms of a hierarchy um, of achieving your goals, there's the tasks which then help you complete projects. Projects are little pieces of work which drive you towards achieving your key results and the key results are what help you hit your objectives. So it all is a focus from the day to day activities all the way up to your objectives and ultimately your goal. Anyway, that's the key results. So we can see that there. Um, again, we've got the status and then one little thing that I want to do on the um, dashboard is I can quickly go and update these. So for example, let's just say that the YouTube one, it was 232. Let's say that I've had a flurry because you've gone and subscribed to my channel. So please do go and do that. So let's just say that 10 of you go and subscribe. So that could instead be say 242. Um, and we can see that that's then updated and I'm now 2% towards my goal uh, rather than the 1%. So let me just put that back. Cool, there we go. So those are um, the uh, key objectives. Then on the right hand side, I have what I call my daily big three. Um, this is what I learned from Ali Abdal. Um, and every day I set myself three key tasks that I must complete and I commit to completing in order to move myself towards my goals. And I set those the night before. So for today, um, you can see that we've got record a YouTube video, which is exactly what I'm doing now. Then I've got create the Twitter content. So I'm on Twitter. So do go and follow me if you'd like more, um, more Twitter content. Um, and then I also want to create a new header graphic. So those are the three mission critical things that I want to complete today. Um, and here I've also got an overdue and this is purely for big three. So if, for example, um, I couldn't complete one of these tasks for whatever reason, I can quickly look, go and look at the overdue and we can see that there's none at the moment, um, but I must complete these big three each day. There we've got a little link to my weeks. So I've got the previous week, this week, and then ultimately it'll show next week. And that's where I can just jump into my commitments and planning for this week um, here on the right hand side. Cool. If I then go and scroll down, um, you can see that within this view on the left hand side, I've got these uh, action buttons. And this harks back to what I said earlier, where I want to be able to do a critical, uh, three critical things on my dashboard. So here, so often, we'll be in the middle of something and our brain will just go somewhere else and say, oh, you need to do X. So I don't want to think about it. I literally will just go into here. I'll go, for example, new note, click on this, um, and then I'll go and say, um, write down some ideas, a new idea. And I can just click off it. And then that's done. 
Um, and it's really, really easy, um, again, with tasks, projects, um, resources, um, and also for my newsletter, which I send out. And if you do want to subscribe to the newsletter, um, I'll drop the link into the description below. Um, but anyway, so those are various um, quick actions and I don't have to think about them. And then we've got our weekly calendar. So here I've got a couple of things. The first thing is the um, my daily big three. So um, up here, we've got just for today. And then if I scroll down, I can see also where it's going. So today it's threes. And then tomorrow, it's going to be all about my real estate OS product, which are going to be launching later in the year. Um, I've also got graphics that I'm creating um, and scheduling those onto Twitter. So I can see that all of my uh, three for yesterday were done. Uh, these are the three today, three tomorrow. On the right hand side, um, I've I love this concept also if we've got so much on our plate and we need to focus. So for example, I've got lots and lots of projects that I'm working on, but for this week I've gone and selected what I've called highlight projects. So let me show you a quick example. So here I'm currently planning out my Notion for Real Estate website. So if I open this project, we can see that it's selected and in progress, the dates, so this is until uh, next week, um, it's associated with the subjective um, and the key results, etc. But you can see that I've got this section here, which is a highlight. So each week when I plan out my week, I cherry pick certain projects that I want to focus on and I call them highlights. So if I just go and untick it, you can actually see in the background here that it's gone and deselected it. So it's all about raising your awareness of certain critical things that you want to focus on. So again, if I just go and click on highlight, it then go and drops it back onto the uh, onto the dashboard. Underneath, I go and say how big this project is. So I've said, well, actually, I think it's about 14 to 28 days. Um, actually, I think it's probably slightly less, so I'm going to make this medium. Um, then we've got how many tasks. So these are all uh, formulas. So how many tasks are there for? How many have I completed? And then I can track my progress. Underneath, I've got a lot more bits, but I'm not going to go into these specifically. But if you do want to know more, uh, then I can uh, create a future video. And then we can see here with the various tasks. So I want to research other creators, uh, speak to chat GPT about it, draft the pages, draft, draft the layout, draft the pages and their content. And here we can see associated notes as well. Again, if you want to know more about how I tie my notes to notebooks, to resources, to projects, then drop a comment down below and I will uh, make a future video on this. But quickly, what is the project? What are the objectives? This is quite a small project, so I'm not worrying too much about that. What are the actions? And then various notes and a scratch pad if I wanted to just do a quick uh, brain dump. I can literally just go and type onto there um, and then go and sort it out later. So that's highlighted projects. Um, I've also got the same with notes. So here, for example, I've got some uh, Notion Creator website uh, inspiration. So that's relevant because I want to go and design my own website. So now I've looked at other creators first um, for some inspiration. Um, and we can see here I've got some uh, notes in this notebook. And I've just gone and said that this is a note highlight. So that's there. I can take that off or put it back on again. And then the resource highlight, this is actually a roll up. So because um, I'm focusing on the website and I've made the website a highlight, uh, it's then gone and highlighted uh, the resource highlight here uh, as well. Cool. So that's the projects and the notes. Underneath, we've got various uh, reference materials. So if I wanted to quickly dive into looking into um, some information, um, I've just got here a linked date, linked view of various databases. So areas are, as I described earlier, so finance, marketing, personal development, coaching and mentoring. Then I've got the resources and these are broken down per area. So you can see that at the moment under marketing, I'm interested in newsletters, copywriting, Twitter, YouTube, virality and uh, my website. Um, so you can see each of these. And if I just jump in quickly to one of these sections, we can see the various uh, notebooks within this resource. Um, so this is, for example, how to grow a newsletter. And then lastly, we've got current projects. So the current projects that I'm working on uh, broken down by the various uh, key results. So it's planning the website, uh, creating the Twitter product graphics and uh, drafting the real estate OS. So those are my various projects and the timeline. So as you can see, there are a lot of bits to this, but it's all about thinking what you want to achieve first, and then how can the tool serve you up the information to help you achieve what you want, rather than just thinking, what database am I gonna check in? What page am I gonna chuck in? And it looking a little bit chaotic. So in that sort of vein, um, let's then look here at a couple of other things. So this is a view that's very much around taking action. So you can see that in the middle, that, well, there's. Firstly, there's a little motivational thing when the going gets tough on the left hand side. Then we've got my uh, big three. 
So again, these are the three critical tasks. Uh, I can see some more detail around uh, what are, what's due now, what's next and what's later. Another thing is that we always get these little pockets of time where maybe we want to do something and we're feeling a bit tired or maybe we're really energetic and we want to achieve something. So all of my tasks, um, all, I try and give a energy level to them. So if I click onto this one, we can see that I've got energy and so I've got some low energy tasks. So especially after lunch, you get that post lunch slump. Um, so here we've got into maybe looking into Twitter premium, uh, medium energy and high energy tasks, and then also any that are overdue, for example, here. Um, and we can see that these, I need to go and tidy these up. Uh, then underneath, again, we've got quick actions, reference material, other dashboards if I need to jump into those, and then the project timeline um, and the progress of the various projects on the right hand side. So that's very much around an action orientated getting things done. Um, and then we've got a weekly view, um, which is slightly different. So here, this gives us a weekly view of my big three. So I can see, okay, cool, I know what's for today, but also I know what's for tomorrow. How am I tracking on the projects, but also a little bit more of an overview of the OKRs and the timeline underneath, um, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the uh, day and the weekly views. The last thing that I want to do just very quickly show you also is about templates. So for example, when I go and create a new week here, if I go into new week and then I just go and edit this template, uh, we can see that I've got different sections um, for uh, planning out the week. So I can look at my goal again, just to remind myself how I'm tracking in the key results. Then I've got get clear. So this is emptying my head. So are there any tasks uh, each week that I know I need to do, which I've not captured? Same with projects, notes, and resources. Then I've got all of these sort of loose ends. So are there any um, uh, here tasks that I need to go and sort out any projects? So I can go and review them and then go and associate them to maybe a key result. Maybe I need to put them into the future, uh, etc. Uh, the same with my notes inbox. So these are just things that I've captured in my head. Remember, we've got the quick actions on the dashboard. So that would go into this uh, inbox section, which I then need to go and process and the same for resources. So that's the first thing is just to go and get clear. Then we've got get current. Um, so this is all about planning out uh, my daily big three for the following week. Um, uh, are there any things that are blocked? Any things that are overdue? Uh, are there any projects that need to be sorted out, etc.? And then lastly, uh, the last section is uh, to uh, get creative. So if I go and open this one, uh, this is where we can go and look at all of the projects, plan things out, schedule things um, for the upcoming week based um, per uh, key result. So that's just uh, a template for key for um, each week. Also, if I just go and show you another. So if I go into here, we've also got our projects. And again, projects have got a template. Um, and I showed you this briefly earlier. So here, when I go to edit, we can see what's the project information. I can brainstorm here the inbox. So what are all the actions? Then I can go and plan out the actions. So are they due now? Um, are they next or are they later? Um, and then also go and review just a table of the various tasks. Then we've got any notes associated with the project as well. So that's a very high level overview of my Notion setup for 2024. Uh, as I said earlier, if you do want me to go into more detail about any of the various sections, features, capabilities, then do just drop me a comment uh, down below. Um, this year, I'm going to be producing so many more videos just to help you in your Notion use, um, best practice, how I use it, tours around my template, behind the scenes, all of that sort of thing. So if you are interested in that sort of content, then just do go and make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that's been useful and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. See ya.